Hmm, monkey. Today we have an epic battle between two gorillas. One of them is an actual gorilla, the other is a robot gorilla. Today we are going to see if the artificial gorilla can beat a real gorilla. That's right, we've got an epic battle between Optimus Prime from Transformers Beast Wars and Nintendo's very own Donkey Kong. Let's introduce Cartoon Fight Club's next round of fighters. <laughs> Before I introduce you to Optimus Primal, we need to get one thing out of the way. He is not, not, not Optimus Prime. Well, okay, he's technically not Optimus Prime. He's not the usual robot that can turn into a truck, but now able to turn into a gorilla. Anyway, what I'm saying is that Optimus Primal is a completely different character compared to Optimus Prime. Optimus Primal is actually a descendant of the Autobots. Optimus was a captain of the exploration ship that diverted off course to pursue a stolen ship from Megatron, who is also not the same as the Megatron you might be familiar with. This is going to be a running theme, isn't it? When the Maximals and the Predacons arrived on Earth, they were exposed to too much Energon. And yes, I said when. That's because the Transwarp sent the Maximals and the Predacons into a different time and not just a different place. In order to handle the dangerous and overflowing energon that came from Earth, both Maximals and Predacons needed beast forms to develop an immunity, and thus turning Optimus into Optimus Primal. According to Beast Wars stats, Optimus Primal is a serious force to be reckoned with. In his robot mode, he can run at speeds that roughly clock in at 30 miles per hour. But in his gorilla mode, he can run as fast as 37 miles per hour. But if that's not fast enough, then he can always use his jet thrusters to not only go faster, but also fly high in the air. With his jet thrusters, he can fly at roughly seven times the speed of sound. Optimus Primal also has one million horsepower. Horsepower is the force that's needed to move 550 pounds one foot a second. That means Optimus Primal has the power to move 550 million pounds. So basically, he has the power to move the Empire State Building, just to give you a visual understanding. But Optimus Primal isn't just limited to close quarters combat. He also has plenty of ranged attacks at his disposal. Some of these include a missile launcher and pistols that the Energon-based explosives shoot at rapid fire. But as for his actual melee weapons, he has a pair of powerful swords that are strong enough to slice through cyber metal and stone as if they were just butter. Optimus Primal is also a very tactical and skilled fighter. He is very experienced having fought many different foes in his lifetime. He is smart enough to plan many different types of ambushers on groups of foes and is even shown to be quite good at stealth too. He's gone head to head with powerful forces such as Megatron, Dinobot, and Rampage. He's even shown to have some decent regeneration on him. Optimus Primal's biggest weakness however is getting bitten in the thigh. It's like Achilles' heel. When he got struck there, he immediately died. Okay, that's not actually his biggest weakness. He has shown to survive much more deadly attacks than that. That one event was just an unfortunate travesty that happened in a fight, but it shows that he's obviously not invincible and can be put down with enough force. We just talked about a robot gorilla, but now let's discuss a real gorilla. Donkey Kong. Any hardcore Nintendo fans or even just longtime Mario fans will know that Donkey Kong wasn't always the king of the jungle. He was actually Mario's original foe, even before Bowser. That's right, Donkey Kong's debut appearance was kidnapping a lady named Pauline and climbing up construction sites while throwing barrels at Mario, who was originally just Jumpman at the time. Also, Mario was a carpenter at the time. So yeah, a lot has changed over the years. Nowadays, Mario is saving Princess Peach from Bowser's clutches. Pauline is running a city named after the ape who kidnapped her, so take that as you will. And finally, Donkey Kong now lives on his own island. Donkey Kong would usually rather leave people alone. That is, unless you mess with his bananas. And if you're on his banana bad side, then get ready to have mashed potato brains. Because DK does not fool around. While he may have started out as Mario's original foe, he has grown into his own hero. Nowadays, instead of kidnapping ladies for short, plump, Italian plumbers to rescue, 
Donkey Kong now spends his days on DK Island with the rest of the Kong family, protecting his banana horde from many types of evil, namely the Kremlings, as well as the Tiki Tak tribe and the Snowmats, and of course, to take on these many different types of evils. You would also need to have some serious strength to back that up, and a good thing for DK, he has that in spades. Of course, one of DK's most notable traits is throwing barrels. He did it in his very first appearance in order to stop Jumpman, or Mario, or whatever you want to call him in this game. Anyways, the point is, the big monkey likes to throw barrels. Not only is he known for finding barrels to throw, but he can even summon barrels to throw if he doesn't have any. But if he doesn't feel like throwing barrels, he can just turn himself into a barrel by barrel rolling into his opponents. This roll is so strong that it can immediately knock any foe out in DK's way. Of course, with his two muscular arms the size of tree trunks, Donkey Kong has plenty of strength on his side. He will happily punch anyone dumb enough to stand in the way of him and his bananas. He, his punches are so strong that he can effortlessly send his enemies flying into the sky, as well as being strong enough to punch boulders into smithereens. Donkey Kong's main shtick is obviously his strength, but just because he's known for his strength that doesn't mean he's slow. The guy is fast enough to ignite his fists on fire, meaning that he can punch at speeds that can range up to around Mach 5. As for actual reaction and travel speed, he is fast enough to dodge lightning strikes and outrun tumbling boulders. And of course, with DK technically coming from the Mario universe since he debuted in Mario's very first game, he can easily scale to Mario, which can grant him some insane stats such as being able to lift entire castles, the speed to dodge lasers, and the durability to survive being in a black hole. But one of DK's best feats that doesn't come from scaling is his feat of punching the moon out of orbit. Now this moon isn't the same size as our regular moon we're all used to. The moon DK punched was very clearly way, way smaller than our regular moon, considering that it was about the same size, maybe even a little bigger than DK Island. Even though this may not be the same size of our moon, the fact that one giant punch from Donkey Kong was able to knock it out of orbit should really show you just how powerful DK is. Now as impressive as all of this is, don't let it distract you from Donkey Kong's weaknesses. While he has some impressive stats, he's not exactly one to fight with strategy or skill. Meaning a much smarter fire can likely blitz and confuse him with much smarter and tactical moves. Speaking of smarts, Donkey Kong also greatly lacks them. Some say that DK being immune to getting hypnotized is a cool feat, but honestly, it probably goes to show that there's not really a whole lot going upstairs in that big head of his. And now, let's get ready for the fight. This battle will take place on Earth, and remember, there is no prep time. Let the battle begin!
Hopefully you enjoyed that animation, and if you did, super special thanks to Team Animation Rewind's Gabriel M. I also owe a huge thanks to your boy Mecca for providing that pre and post analysis script, and huge thanks to Gray Julius for editing this episode and hosting it. Thanks, and enjoy the post analysis. Well, that's just prime. The winner of this battle is Donkey Kong, and honestly, as much as I hate to say this, the greatest thing going against Donkey Kong is that Optimus Primal is clearly the smarter of the two, and much more of a skilled fighter than Donkey Kong. Optimus Primal thinks logically in a fight, and fights like a tactical machine, while Donkey Kong's fighting style is much more emotionally based, and on top of not being the smartest ape around. But statistically speaking, Donkey Kong is just so superior to Optimus that this skill and intelligence gap can be very easily overlooked. Honestly, just putting Donkey Kong on par with Mario and his friends would be enough to seal the deal as to whether he could beat Optimus Primal or not. But let's make this fight a little more interesting and put the Mario scaling on the sidelines, and instead only focus on the feats that Donkey Kong shows in his own series. Because that does actually nerf him a bit. So let's start off with speed. While in flight mode, Optimus Primal can reach speeds that can range up to Mach 7. That is very impressive on its own right. And as a matter of fact, it actually does give Primal a mobility edge over Donkey Kong. But Donkey Kong has still shown much more impressive speed feats. Donkey Kong is shown to be fast enough to dodge lightning strikes, which would put his speed at around massively hypersonic. As for strength, this should be easy to figure out. Going off of official statements, Optimus Primal's stat page has stated that he can reach building level at his peak. That may be the official statement, but he's actually shown to be way above that in the cartoon. Optimus Primal can move 550 million pounds, and can reach mountain level strength via scaling to Megatron, but Donkey Kong's speed of punch in the moon can easily top this. Now a lot of people will say that this puts Donkey Kong at planet level, but this actually isn't true. This moon is very clearly different from our actual moon in the real world. We can clearly see that it's much, much smaller and around the size of DK Island, but I wouldn't say that this feat is island level considering that it took a fully charged giant punch to get it to fall out of orbit. I would personally consider this feat of punching the moon to be country level. But no matter what you put this feat at being, island, country, or planet level, it's still more impressive than anything Optimus Primal has shown. As for durability, I could throw more fancy calcs at you, but honestly this would be a near repeat of what I said for strength. Donkey Kong has survived being thrown off his island and being knocked several islands away and survived an explosion that knocked him out of orbit. There is no evidence at all to suggest that Optimus Primal can survive anything that's remotely close to that. His best feats come from surviving attacks from Megatron, which would put his durability at mountain level. But that very much pales in comparison to Donkey Kong, who at the very least has island level durability. And keep in mind, this is only including feats from Donkey Kong's home series. Donkey Kong has actually proven way more powerful thanks to him fighting on par with Mario. We've talked over and over again about how powerful, durable, and fast Mario and Co. are, thanks to the Black Hole minigame for Mario Party 6, giving Mario and thus DK Solar System level durability, as well as the speed to dodge FTL lasers. Again, I am willing to ignore scaling DK to Mario and stick to feats from his own games just to even the playing field. But if I were to do that, it still doesn't give us that much of a fair fight for Optimus Primal. Sure, his intelligence and skill edge is going to keep the fight interesting, but ultimately, it will only be a matter of time before DK lands a lethal blow onto Optimus Primal and putting him out of commission. Making the winner of this battle, Donkey Kong. On the next episode of the Omni-Man Omni-Spam Marathon. Uh, hey, my kid can't see. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and welcome to Fortnite. Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should be